Hello, good morning. <laughs> Attempt number two. It's time to revisit Chess Killer Tips podcast. Episode number six. Yes, I hope that now you can hear me. I think all the te technical problems are uh, solved. So we can we can go on. We can go on and as usual we're going to start by uh, listening to this episode, episode six of my Chess Killer Tips podcast, which, well, it's been a while. It's been a while since they've all been published. Uh, they uh, were recorded in the period of from July 2007 to August 2009, so a very long time ago. And uh, this year I decided to, to do a small um, series of streams dedicated to those podcasts and uh, we are listening to them and we're going over in more details um, on each episode okay so let's let's start i will switch on now the uh, episode number six which is less a little bit less than three minutes we're gonna listen and then we're gonna discuss it by chessqueen.com Here's your host, Alexandra Kostinyuk. I want to show you today a very nice 1927 study by a Russian chess composer Leonid Kubel. It's why to play and win. This is a difficult study to solve to the very end, but give it a try. Press pause now and think about it for as long as you need. I'll be back at the end of the music. Welcome back. The solution starts with a6, e3, a7, e2, a8, queen, e1, queen, queen d5, check, king b4. This is the key moment of the study, and it's only starting to get interesting. If you haven't yet found the solution all the way to the end, starting from this position, you can now press pause and give it one more try. After the quiet queen d3, black is in Zugzwang, which means that any move he plays will worsen his position. If black moves his king, he will be checkmated after queen a3. If he plays queen c1, he loses his queen after queen a3 check, king c4, b3 check, winning the queen on c1. The same will happen after queen a1. Queen c3 check, king a4, b3 check. The chess game is a challenge for your brain. Sometimes you need to calculate variations many moves ahead. Solving chess studies is a great way to train and to keep your mind working to its fullest potential while enjoying the great beauty of chess compositions. Thanks for watching the Chess Killer Tips podcast. Send your questions and comments to alexandra at kostinyuk.com. Well, here we go, another episode, another very beautiful example of a chess study. What is a chess study? What is a chess composition? And why are, are these studies uh, are quite um, useful to solve? Actually, when preparing for this, uh, for this episode, I found an article on chess.com an article of uh, Grandmaster Daniel Noraditsky, which is called Why Solving Studies is So Important. So, uh, 
I will share the link to this article with you right now. You can uh, have a look at it mm, uh, later on. And um, well, definitely, chess studies are not usually are not only beautiful. Um, well, I've always considered th uh, this uh, this particular. Um, this beauty idea hidden behind each uh, study as a main purpose of uh, chess composition to show to show uh, chess logic uh, some beautiful algorithm beautiful ideas that is uh, very hard to find during a practical game but during uh, well when you when a composer a chess composer creates a certain study he puts some uh, ideas um in it and it's very um usually it's very beautiful okay and in this particular episode the uh, one of the studies of um of the russian uh composer uh, leonid kubel uh, was um, discussed and actually there is uh, an article about on on this co composer and on his studies coming up uh, on chess.com or even a lesson uh, with um, the most beautiful Kubel studies are coming up on chess.com uh, in the coming in the coming days or weeks uh, and probably uh, this um, episode uh, will give you uh, some also more desire to read this article uh, more motivation to read it okay now let's get to the chess position that was discussed in this episode mm -hmm. where is my board uh -huh. now here we go here we go a study by leonid kubel that according to my studies database was created in 1927 i believe just a second i will try to verify we don't see it here but i think it was 1927. Uh, let's review it once again it's a pawn sand game and we know that pawn sand game uh, can be very difficult to play and to solve here white needs to play a6 not a takes b6 because after a takes b6 the pawns will be promoted simultaneously and there will there are not going to be um, uh, this um, beautiful winning idea that we'll see in uh, in the line with a6 after a6 e3 a7 e2 a8 queen e1 queen pawns also get promoted simultaneously but but white has uh, this very important check on d5 black has the only move king to b4 and now a very nice quiet move which you usually don't expect in queen's end games because it seems um, that so many checks are possible but queen to d3 taking under control this g3 square so black queen does not have any possibilities to check the white king and at the same time and the same time well passing actually move to um to black and suddenly suddenly black finds himself in a zugzwang zugzwang is a position where every move um this side to move makes worsens this position black wishes to skip the move <laughs> to do nothing and to let white move because actually there is no direct threat okay queen a3 check um, is possible but after king c4 after king c4 black is doing fine and the problem yes the problem for black is that it's black to move and uh, the king cannot move because if uh, he moves to the a file he'll get checkmated the queen cannot leave this uh, diagonal diagonal uh, well 
the queen should keep under control the c3 square i mean if it moves away uh, then the king will be checkmated like this and here comes the main line of uh, this uh, study uh, with queen a1 black moves the queen to a1 or to c1 actually it's a mirror variation c1 or a1 in case of queen c1 queen a3 check will follow and after king c4 b3 a very nice discovered attack discovered check uh, and black is losing the queen and the same story will go after will uh, appear on the board after queen a1 queen c3 check king to a4 b3 and again the queen is lost a very nice um, little study not very complicated and uh, and as usual i prepared a few other studies with the same exact idea or uh, i mean as the main line as the main as the main idea of this uh, studies but also the side idea let's check first of all when preparing for this podcast i uh, found another study by leonid kubel on the same idea and actually that happens pretty often that a composer uh, thinks of uh, a certain motive or of a certain idea that he wants to use and he creates several 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 studies with the same idea uh, that's also a study by leonid kubel it's more complicated but it is uh you will see it will use i mean white will win by using the uh, exact same idea it's white to move uh no i didn't compose a study yes this as a composer was leonid kubel and uh as i mentioned uh an article an article on uh, about leonid kubel is coming up or even a lesson is coming up soon to chess.com so hopefully you'll be able to watch it and or even to use it for your chess training sessions uh, when it's um, it's going to be published okay so it's white to move white is uh, piece down and uh, black actually is threatening to checkmate white's king so there is, there is no time to waste uh, white needs to start uh, doing something and uh, create threats well since checkmate is threatening white needs to give checks uh, you need to pick there are several checks possible and white needs to pick the right one the right one in this position is queen to g7 check queen to g3 does not work because uh, king will go to d4 i mean it works but it gives only a draw it's going to be a perpetual for example like this i mean white mm, is not losing but it's not winning either so it's a very nice perpetual check it's a draw but in fact in the starting position also it's very difficult to imagine but white is the side to win this game it's white to move and win and in order to win, white needs to start by playing queen to g7 check. So black has to go to c4 because king takes c2 is not possible in view of uh, queen b2 checkmate. And after king c4, white continues checking uh, the enemy king queen to g4 check. So what's going to happen after uh, king c3? Well, I believe everyone everyone will notice what's going to happen after queen after king takes d5 that should be a very easy warm-up question even for an early morning and actually the same idea right the same idea as we discussed uh, earlier I discovered uh, check and attack yes that's right e4 pawn checking the king and queen attacking the queen and the queen is lost so king takes d5 is not possible let's see what's going to happen after king to b5 
actually this one ah, king king to b5 is the main line of the study so uh, we'll check it uh, a little bit later and after king to c3 what how would you continue the game How would you continue the game? Any ideas? Yes, exactly. Queen to f3. It's important to keep the queen in this d1 h5 diagonal. So if black kings retreats to d4, e3 will follow. And the same idea, the queen is lost. Unfortunately for Black's king, mm, it doesn't have better moves to make after king takes c2, queen b3, and queen b2 checkmate uh, will follow after king c4, uh, queen d3 checkmate in one. So uh, here Black is lost. And the last, the last line that we have discussed yes, yet is king to b5, and here again. Here again, there is only one check that leads to winning the game, which is... Any ideas now? It's more complicated than two questions I asked before. There is more choice. You have more checks possible. One, two, three checks. Well, I mean, it's good to... <laughs> To propose your I mean moves but you need to calculate you need to calculate what's gonna happen if you say Queen to a4 the King will not be staying still right it will move to a6 not to b6 of course because after Queen c6 it's going to be a checkmate and after Queen a4 check King to a6 what are you going to do well, there is another check on c6 but then Bishop b6 will come and yeah the king is too far away um, and we remember the basic the main idea or and the main topic of today's uh, uh, of the episode six is a discovered attack so actually the queen should be somewhere on g4 or a4 but the black king should be closer to the center it should be on d5 right in the final position uh, after c4 again c4 is just a check but the king will go too far away it will give a draw to white but white wants to win and the same here it is just a draw so the right check is exactly it's queen to d7 and now the problem is now it seems that uh, well what is the difference right king can also go to a6 how does this check on d7 change anything but in fact it does change a lot because our white plays queen to c8 check and again king to b6 is not possible in view of queen c6 checkmate so black needs to go to b5 and white forces forces the black king to go to c4 the only move king to c4 and again a very brutal check on a4 now and well if the king goes to d5 we see a very um, familiar already to us uh, discovered attack c4 and if the king goes to c3 the queen continues to harass the black king with giving checks and after king d4 it's easy already to see the final the final point the final move of this study which is c3 winning the queen a very nice beautiful study a very nice uh, geometry and actually that's why i enjoy solving those studies so much because when you manage to find the right uh, line when you manage to find this right idea then you feel such a joy uh, and um, well 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 that's why that's why we discuss those studies i hope it will give you the same joy 
as it gives to me when I see those beautiful ideas. Let's move on. So we started with uh, two studies by Leonid Kubel. Now we're going to another study, uh, also by a very um, famous uh, composer, Henry Ring. I'm trying to see if there are uh, articles uh, on on those composer. I I thought I saw some some of them, but it's a very complicated study. I must say, I think much more difficult than the ones we just discussed. So I will not torture you a lot. Uh, I will just uh, show you. The main line yes it's much harder than a puzzle rush definitely or probably puzzle rush uh, I mean the problem uh, 100 of the puzzle rush okay it's why to move let's see how to start and what to do if I take the pawn on c3 with either pawn and the pawn will move to g3 and again we'll have an equal um, Queen Sam game. Well, the game will be ended with some perpetual pretty soon. So B takes C3 or D takes C3 doesn't really work. And in order to win, White needs to push the pawn to F7. It looks scary since uh, Black can take either of this uh, White pawn, and it seems that the Queens are being promoted simultaneously and black will have two extra pawns but in fact in fact it's not so easy because if black takes the d2 pawns after f8 queen d1 queen uh, quite uh, easy but nevertheless very beautiful tactics works here for white and uh, white wins the game I'm sure you you can spot this idea. This idea happens quite often. Uh, in well, you can uh, see uh, similar ideas, similar studies. Yes, Queen E7 or Queen E8. I'm not sure it's called. It an x-ray I think it's um, I think it's a uh, skewer no more a skewer an example of a skewer than an x x-ray but uh, whatever we call it Whatever we call it, yes, queen e8 is also the right way to continue. It doesn't matter what check you will give, it's up to you. But with any of those two checks, uh, the king is forced to go onto the d-file. And after that, white wins the queen by giving a check on the d-file. Uh, winning the queen with a skewer happens pretty often in studies. And in actually in uh, uh, practical games... Um, when you see those pawn races on the uh, H and A files, and one pawn promotes, for example, onto H1, with the king being on F3, and the other pr promotes onto A8, A8 check, and uh, white wins the queen, or vice versa. I mean, or H8, or A1 check, winning the queen on H8. Uh, but yeah, some. Let's get back to this study. So C takes D2, loses the game. What's gonna happen after C takes B2? Well, white needs to promote the queen. Uh, black promotes um, his queen as well. And now it's a crossroad. Where to check? Where to give a check to the black king? It's quite... Um, difficult decision maybe it's not so difficult if we calculate well the problem 
this the checks on the f file here for example if you give a check on f6 the king will go to d5 and after queen f5 it goes to c6 and the best you can do here is to make a draw so queen f6 does not work queen f5 doesn't work either because of king d6 uh, queen f4 also pushing the king into the wrong direction uh, so there, there are no, no, not, not so many checks left in this position, and the right one is queen to e7. Queen e7 check. Uh, king d4. What's going to happen after uh, king to d5? let's try to understand actually that's not so easy not so easy at all but i think that's the same the same idea with the main line here the same story if king goes to e4 we see the same concept the same idea of winning the queen with the discovered attack if the king goes to c4, same idea again, c3, the king is caught on any squares here. And here comes the main question, what's going to happen after king e5? And that is quite challenging to find, especially if you solve the study from the very beginning, you need to foresee all those lines and you need to foresee this position and to find the uh, move for white to make. I'm very happy for those, for those that find those studies, that find the studies easy. I don't think they are easy at all. Of course, when you are moving the pieces and when all the lines are explained to you, they might seem quite obvious. But believe me, it's not really the case. D4, again, when you're offering a move, especially if this move uh, has uh, requires some sacrifices, you need to um, not only say this move, not only say D4, but then continue the line. Okay, C takes D4. What is the point of giving away this pawn? I'll grab it. What do you want to do here? What is the idea of playing D4? I don't really see any ideas here for white. Queen F5, the king will go away. And I have, black has already three extra pawns. Uh, uh, queen c7, same story, the king goes uh, too far to catch it. Queen e7 is possible, but it will repeat the position. So the king will go to d5, and in order to win, you will need to give check on d7 and get the king back to e5. Queen f5, again, pushing the king into the wrong direction. The king just moves away and it's impossible to win here so the only move that wins here for white it's a very um, difficult move to make to find it's a quiet move and there are the most difficult ones uh, actually in in a practical game and in a study as well because it's a queen and game i mean how how can you move i mean how can you make those waiting moves it seems so many uh, possibilities uh, are open for black after such moves and yes the right move is c4 c4 c3 doesn't create any threats it's losing actually probably after white is losing after c3 but uh, c4 is the right way to continue because it does create a deadly threat and the threat is to give a checkmate on d5 so it's not really that quiet as it looks because uh, queen d5 is uh, threatening so black needs to protect uh, the king how how can black do that if he moves the queen to e4 a very beautiful 
very beautiful. Actually, not so easy to spot even here. Checkmate right in the middle of the board will uh, follow. Queen f8 does not trade uh, queens here because queen just will grab the other queen. The pawn is moving forward. This pawn on g4 is going forward. It doesn't go backwards. The square is not protected. And queen f4 will just... I'll just grab the queen. So, queen e4, how does white win? Queen e7 is not, is not a checkmate. I'll go to d4. And the pawn on c4 is hanging. Queen d6 is not a checkmate there. But how, how to get this d4 square away? Not how to... Queen to g7, king to g6. No, guys. It's checkmate in two. Come on. It's checkmate in two. It's very easy. Very obvious. No, g3, queen f4 check. You need to... Yes, you need to grab this square. You need to stop this possibility for black king to get to d4 square. And in order to do so, you just play d4. Very beautiful move. Not obvious at all. Under three attack attacks, but but it's checkmate. It's a checkmate. Doesn't matter with uh, what piece black uh, is going to take the pawn on d4. He will get checkmated. And uh, that's the main idea uh, for white here. Queen d5 is threatening, and after black protects the square from e4 or h1, doesn't matter. A brilliant, brilliant d4 move comes, and it forces black's king to go to the h1 a8 diagonal, which is quite deadly. Since after c takes d4, a familiar queen e7 checkmate will appear on the board. And if black king goes to e4, easy to spot, queen d5 or queen c6 or even queen b7 for some who wants, who likes long checks, and will follow and the queen is lost. I think a very nice, uh, beautiful study by Henry Rink, not uh, a very easy one, especially if you try to figure out the way from the move one. But certainly, uh, when you do figure out the way, you enjoy it so much. Well, Gregory Morse, in Blitz, um, how do you deal? You don't, of course, you don't have time to calculate these beautiful lines, but you just hope that um, you'll be able to find a uh, good continuation, uh, discovered attack or check. You always look for those small tactics, you know they exist. Uh, yes, intuition, experience, whatever you call it. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on because there are four more studies that I prepared. Seven studies in total we're going to discuss today. Uh, with the same idea, now two studies of another composer are going up, are coming up. Mm, what was his name? It's uh, Ladislav Prokesh. He played for the Czech Olympiad team, so he was quite a strong chess player. And um, he was born and died in Prague. And it's a very nice, actually, study. It's why to move and win. And what's nice in it, when solving it, you need to uh, recall some uh, theoretical positions with queen uh, versus pawn endgames. So black is threatening to promote one of um, his two pawns. White needs to do something about it. The problem is to understand why queen to h1 is just a draw. Why is it a draw? 
for those of you who are asking about uh, blitz match i do have a session uh, blitz i uh, do have a stream dedicated specifically for uh to playing with my uh, subscribers it's uh, on saturday so go to my discord to find out the exact schedule when it's going to happen and you might have a chance to play with me that day but now it's about chess killer tips podcast we just listened uh, listened to the sixth episode and now we're discussing in more details uh, the main concept the main idea of this uh, podcast yes the problem is that white king is too far away it's too far away and that means that um, we'll get to the position with uh, the c2 pawn and let me check and let me show you since we touched this topic um, what what where exactly the white king should be in order to win in uh, in in these um, positions because with the c pawn it's quite uh, tricky it depends where actually uh, the uh, um, king of the weaker side is uh, standing okay so king to d3 and if white plays uh, queen f1 king takes d2 queen takes f2 and we see that our king is too far away in fact when the um, king of the stronger side of the weaker side is from this side of the board not on b2 but on d2 it gives uh, white more chances to win so in order to win uh can i draw how do i draw here so there are there are two uh, main squares these two where our king is trying to get and he needs to be two moves away from those two squares so it's like this um, it's like this yeah it's like this I'm no not here to g4 and then to okay let me try like this I think this is the um, winning zone as it's called if I'm not mistaken so if the king is out of this zone on f7 it's out so he should be in between this zone in order to uh, to win this uh, position. But with the king on b2, the zone is getting even smaller. With the king on b2, it's uh, already these two squares that are important. And the zone is like this, I think something like this when the king is on b2 okay so queen to h1 does not win here because of king d3 and the pawn on d2 will be lost and our king is too far away to help uh, our queen to win the game so what to do how to continue how to win this game Good night to those of you who are going to sleep. What is that box called? Well, you know, I when I was growing up, um, uh, the main uh, books that uh, were published on endgames uh, at that time were the uh, Yuri Averbach endgame manuals, and it was just called a winning zone there. And it was like written. And now you have uh, different books, different explanations. But the most important thing is to understand that in order to win ver uh, with the queen versus the far advanced pawn on the second rank, with the c and f pawns, but the bishop pawns, your king really should be within this box, zone, whatever you called it. Um, well, the king does not have time to move closer because uh, 
we need to 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 protect from these threats yes and actually there are not so many moves to make if queen h1 uh, gives us just a draw and black is threatening to promote uh, a queen we need to give a check we need to give a check there is just one uh, move left for white to try and the idea is uh, to uh, get the king further from the d3 uh, square because if the king moves to d5 then this position is won for white because in uh, like this queen f1 check securing the d3 uh, square and after king b3 d4 the pawn will be helping white to win the game because well, this position is definitely a winning one so black will try to uh, play to d3 anyway but here unexpectedly i should say they lose the game they lose the game yes yes that's true queen takes on to f2 c1 queen queen e3 check and here comes our main topic of today's uh, stream uh, which was shown also in the kubel studies that we discussed in the ring studies after king c4 d3 is winning beautifully again this discovered attack and also we need to notice we need to calculate that after king c2 white is winning quite elegantly as well by exchanging exchanging the queens and as we know the king can never catch up with the pawns from behind well that's another that's another very beautiful elegant study not not very complicated but nevertheless nice to uh, solve another study of uh, the same composer of Ladislav Rokes it's why to move and win this one is a little bit well, I even not sure that it's uh, more complicated let's see c7 it's quite obvious I mean uh, there are not really there are no other moves to make g takes f2 is losing because of very familiar to us already discovered attack and if the pawn goes to g2 the queen will be lost anyway although it will require more moves to make more checks to give but same idea with another pawn also very beautiful and easy uh, study to enjoy d takes e4 uh, i don't think it worked because after d takes e4 well first of all uh, i can grab the c6 pawn if you play d takes e4 here it doesn't really help because then you won't be able to force the king uh, with checks to where it needs to be in order for white to win the game so c7 yes yeah, c7 easy just checks getting the queen forcing the king to go onto this unfortunate square under the attack of white's pawn and yes here we go the queen is lost moving on moving on to final studies which are more complicated especially this one but i decided to include them anyway to show you to show them to you anyway um, this is this is a study by Kurt Uken I hope that I pronounce this name correctly why to move and win born in Germany immigrated to Argentina in 1938 let's go over it together because it's 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 quite quite complicated in order to win the only move to win 
is uh, this check on f2 why not on e3 because you need to have the check on f6 after king a6 in order to be able to checkmate black's king so queen f2 is the right move to continue king to c6 queen to f6 king to c5 a very and very difficult move to find but actually it's difficult when you're solving the study but i think quite easy in a practical game we're going to make it automatically automatically in a blitz game i think yes uh, well maybe not automatically but they're likely we're going to make it because it creates a like it creates some pressure around the black king we can check that queen e5 king d5 will queen d5 will follow so king c7 I think is likely to be made even in a blitz game here and the situation is very unfortunate here for black because actually mm, he's in took swank any move he makes is losing and uh, queen d6 queen e6 is threatening to win the queen so let's uh, see all the possibilities for black queen to g8 is losing because of several checks and then white is forcing is forcing the uh, black king to go to to step onto those mind squares and the queen is lost if the king if the queen goes to b1 trying to hide under the uh, black the white pawn then we'll have the uh, our main idea our main topic, our main motive of uh, today's uh, stream b3, another very hard move to find with the threat of uh, uh, queen d6 checkmate and then c3, here we go familiar pattern already to us if uh, black, hop, black tries to save the king by pushing the pawn he is going to get well, here it's a checkmate and after king to c4 he's losing the queen but also a checkmate is possible by playing king to b6 and then queen to d3 king b4 is also losing after a check and here same story queen e6 or even checkmate if you wish to be disqualified b3 winning the queen queen e4 is also losing due to the fork so nothing to do nothing to do absolute took uh, the only the only possible move uh, that uh, is um, still um, that still might help black to save the game is queen to d5 because here in order to win uh, white needs to find a very um, beautiful move similar to the one that we've already uh, seen today in the ring study the move under three attacks yes the move c4 a very nice a very nice move just uh, even more beautiful than in the ring study because here every single black piece can take the white pawn but every capture is just losing because of three checkmates and b takes c4 another checkmate yes very beautiful indeed and again black is in very unpleasant situation Queen e4 loses because of queen f5. It's also not so obvious. You need to calculate pawns and games. Uh, pawns and game once again. But f8 queen check. Queen to g8 is losing because of those uh, very strange looking maneuvers. Uh, but with the main purpose of forcing the black king to take the pawn to open up the diagonal and thus uh, to lose the queen queen a8 again 
similar maneuvers with similar idea but on the other side of the board now king d5 loses because of queen to f3 very very nice study very nice geometry i've never seen this study but i enjoyed it very much when found it uh, when preparing for this um, stream queen to g2 loses after queen e5 well and here i think we can just take on b5 with a checkmate and if the king takes on c4 you know, familiar familiar to us already idea of forcing the king to this diagonal losing the queen very beautiful one very beautiful one indeed and let's uh, carry on to the last study that we're going to discuss uh, today it's also uh, quite a complicated study let me check the name of this composer the first name it's a gregor werner an austrian composer is it no 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 <laughs> another composer now i'm talking talking i i <laughs> I, I typed a Werner composer and now I think Gregor Werner Austrian composer what is this all about okay that's uh, that's a nice uh, that's a nice uh, story no it's another Werner not the one from Austria and not the one from um, well we all know very well uh, that's uh, that was no it's it's another wait Werner chess composer. Let's put it this way, otherwise I'm going to... Is it... I'm not sure which Werner is it. I see only the initial Werner G. Well, if someone of you knows, I'll appreciate if you let me know the first name of this composer. I've had only only last name and the first initial indicated uh, it's why to move and win it's a very uh, hard study so we'll just uh, go over it and discuss brief briefly all the lines queen c5 is a bad move here i mean it gives just a draw it's the right idea but uh, uh, not the right um, move order it's just a draw unfortunately here so in order to win, white needs to find this very difficult move, uh, king to b5, and after h1 queen, another impossible move to make during a practical game is queen to c4. And it turns out that the black king is in a checkmating net. After king queen b1 check, king to c6, it's not possible to protect the king from being checkmated. For example, like here, the bishop is pinned, the queen h4 checkmate comes, and if black takes uh, the bishop, then queen f4 falls, queen f3, and again, a few checks, and a very, very important move to make, a waiting move, a quiet move, another quiet move, why queen uh, to f4 was important. Uh, in order to take under control the c1 square and after king to c4 again it's black to move but there is nothing he can do in order to save himself from losing the game because because he's in Tutswang. same story same funny word if the queen moves away from the h file the king will be checkmated by queen h4 if the queen goes to h2 well, g4, familiar to us, will follow winning the queen. And if g5, then here comes the main idea of the study. Queen f7 check. King g4 is not possible because of queen f3 checkmate. And g6, g4 follows. And after king h2, queen f2, king g4, queen f3. And here we go. King is forced to go to h4. One of the pawns will uh, we sacrificed it in order to open up the road to the second pawn that comes 
with a deadly check just in time to win the queen and and here we go uh actually about uh, well let me finish with this um with this um episode revisiting this episode that's it uh, very complex very beautiful uh, i hope that you enjoyed uh, going over all those studies and enjoying the beauty of the chess geometry and um, chess logic behind those studies uh, to answer your question about chess books uh, since i'm getting so many questions like this in every single of my stream i decided to uh, write an article although it's going to be in russian sorry guys but google translate uh, can help you i'm going to uh, write an article with my suggestions uh, the problems that uh, you should understand that uh, for example uh, the books for beginners that i'm going to recommend uh, are those books that i was studying when i was younger when i was uh, studying chess and of course uh, um, i think uh, there are many books nowadays uh, for beginners that i just not i i cannot uh, really recommend because i'm not reading those books anymore where uh, where when i'm going to publish this article i'm not sure hopefully this week but uh, since i'm going to get asked I'm going to get uh, this question asked again and again about books that I recommend. Uh, I, from the moment I publish this article, I will just share the link and uh, hopefully you'll be able to, to uh, use Google Translate to translate it because they're mainly going to be the names of the articles and um, the names of the books anyway anyway yes those uh, waiting moves are very difficult to spot in these studies but that's why we uh, go over together um, all those studies and if some 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 spectators are going to watch this podcast uh, later on and want to try and solve for studies by themselves they can always pause this is a recording of the stream and try to figure out the way uh, till the very end. <laughs> yes, I do have my own books published. I will make sure to uh, mention these books in uh, this article. And uh, anyway, good good for you new man in chess i'm very happy for you that you can solve those uh, uh those uh, studies and uh, that shows that you have a good potential in chess well that's it for today i hope that you enjoyed uh, this um, this um, stream now i'll see who is streaming right now and and i'm going to send a rate to this channel and i hope to see you uh, really soon again join my discord if you want to um, find out the schedule of my streams yes yes i'm going to give a rate i'm going to give a rate for sure and i hope yes i hope to see you really soon Uh, on my channel so let's just live right let's just live is streaming let's give a, a raid to this channel and i wish all of you a good time good evening afternoon night depends on the place he's stopping ah he's stopping okay well then i'm going to send you to okay to chuck mountain he's streaming um he's streaming four players chess i want to give it a try one day i have no ideas no idea how it works so actually he said he might um 
have a few streams with me to explain. Uh, to Alessia, I sent the rate yesterday. So for a change, I think I can send the rate to Chuck Mountain. Anyway, I wish you all the best and um, see you soon. Uh, для тех, кто говорит по-русски вечером, как обычно, будет Блиц-обзор 10-го тура в Эйкандзе. Так что, надеюсь, увидимся. Take care, bye. Take care guys. Uh, play chess. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.